Babe, say a funny thing so I can react and... Perfect. Thanks, babe. Hey, uh, welcome to Framelines. So this episode, we're going to talk about the Mamiya 645. We're going to look at a project I completed last year, which was a self-published zine. And we're going to look at some of the photographers that inspired it. And to get started, here are some photos from the zine, which is called Crossed With Care. So the zine was kind of inspired by work uh, from the mid 20th century in America, in New York City, by street photographers like Robert Frank, Louis Farr, Louis Stettner, Helen Levitt, and Lisette Modell. These were all photographers whose work focused on humanism and the world around them. For example, Robert Frank said in an interview once, photography must contain one thing, the humane factor of the moment. It's important to see what's invisible to others Maybe the hope in a glance, maybe the sadness in a glance. So each of these photographers used the photograph's emotional effect to create empathy with the subject. And I think this is the kind of photography that really moves me the most, which is why it kind of inspires my work in general and uh, was definitely an inspiration for the work in Crossed With Care. By the way, the, the title Crossed With Care is a reference to that humanistic style of street photography, which says to essentially have a care for your subject. And also it's a little nod to the messaging on placebo buttons on traffic lights in central London. So that's what inspired the overall approach. And from there I knew I had to find the perfect camera for the project, which ended up being the Mamiya 645. So this camera was first introduced in the 70s in a different version. This one is the Mamiya 645 Pro. The original version was the Mamiya M645 and that version looks a bit different in that it's got a different kind of uh, styling to it. It's got a piece of chrome. It almost looks like a, like a Hasselblad kind of styling. Uh, this version was released in the 90s, which is why it's got this uh, kind of black uh, almost camcorder look to it. I still kind of like the look of it though. I think it's a cool looking camera. Um, one thing I love especially is the font here. This kind of uh, the Mamiya logo, the 645. I think it looks really kind of retro and cool. Uh, in general, I, I'm kind of happy with the size of the camera. I think you have to make compromises when you want to shoot medium format and uh, say if something like a Mamiya 7 is out of your budget or if it's just not the right camera for you. So I knew I wanted the camera with a waist level finder. I knew I wanted something that was that would almost operate like a Rolleiflex. I looked at cameras like the Mamiya, 
uh, C330, but I didn't like the aspect ratio being tight to square. Um, also, that's a bit of a beast as well to carry around. This is much lighter. Um, I like the Rolly Flex, I like the Yashica map, but again, you're kind of tied to a square format. Um, with this, you know, you have just a, a lot of flexibility because, you know, you can shoot landscape aspect ratio with this. You can shoot portrait aspect ratio. I love the fact that the finder is enclosed, which is something you don't see on a lot of waist level finders. So it's totally enclosed, which means that you don't get direct sunlight coming in there. So it's very easy to see a subject and uh, kind of focus pretty, pretty quickly. So I kind of like this setup, which is fairly minimal. Uh, we have the smallest lens you can get for the system, which is also one of the best lenses I think on the system. It's an F2.8 80 mm uh, Mamiya C Core N. So it's a new version, which means it has all the kind of new coatings. Um, we have interchangeable backs on this camera, which I found very useful because I could just continue shooting my zine or work for the zine on black and white. And then whenever I wanted to shoot portraits, like color portraits or just do different work from the zine, I could have a different back, which I could use for that. So I like the fact that there's interchangeable backs. So yeah, I love this little camera. It's uh, it's a kind of a gem. It's really taken quite a lot of punishment and uh, it's held up. A lot of people say that this model is kind of prone to failure because it feels, you know, it doesn't feel as kind of solid as the previous model, which is had a lot of kind of metal parts and this is uh, has kind of replaced them for plastic but also remember that this camera was produced in the 90s whereas the previous model was produced in the 70s so although it's made from cheaper parts the parts are newer and less likely to fail you could say you could argue but uh you know i've used the camera and it hasn't really let me down except for one small thing in that the mirror stop uh just inside the lens uh broke uh, one day when I was walking down Oxford Street, which meant that I couldn't actually focus. I sent it away to uh, Piero at PPP Repairs, who is this guy, uh, who's a goddamn genius, and he fixed it, no problem. Um, but by then I was kind of finished the project anyway, so it didn't really interrupt anything. So this is the setup then with the, uh, the eye level finder. So this is a metered eye level finder and the auto winder, which is powered. So as soon as you shoot a frame, it auto winds onto the next frame, uh, like kind of a modern uh, film DSLR. And then inside here you have a metered, uh, this is never gonna, yeah, don't even bother. So this is a metered eye level finder, which makes it much easier than if you want to switch to this for portraits, because you can very easily shoot in portrait mode like that. And it feels very kind of balanced and kind of easy to use. I wouldn't really recommend using this for street photography in this kind of setup because it's quite big. But this bloody thing sounds like... Yeah, so that's the, the kind of setup that I use then for color portraits. And what I also have is this back, which is a 35mm back. And uh, what do I have in there? And I have some film in there right now, which is the Kodak Vision 250D. And I've made a note to shoot it at 200. And uh, so this is 35 mil. So you can load any kind of 35 mil film into this and shoot it on this camera. It just uh, basically kind of crops into the, the 35 mil film area. Uh, but it means, you know, you don't always have to shoot 120. And it's nice to be able to shoot 35 mil with a lens like this and uh, with this kind of system. Or even with the, the waist level finder, being able to shoot 35 mil like that is pretty cool. And for the focusing screens, this is uh, this is the one that I ordered, which is focusing screen N type A. It's kind of a matte ground glass focusing screen that really kind of snaps into focus really effectively. Then you can kind of disassemble this monster just by taking off the various components. Uh, so you can take this off and then you can uh, switch to the waist level finder and you see how tiny that is. It's just kind of a piece of tin almost weighs next to nothing. So when you assemble this onto it, uh, it just kind of clips in like that. Uh, you can kind of, you don't really add that much weight to the camera, but you do have a nice waist level finder. So this just kind of snaps on like that and you click it in. And then you can wind on your film. And uh, I never actually really flip this up. Uh, it does feel a little bit flimsy. So I never really bother. And I just use the knob like that just to just to kind of 
crank it forward whenever I take a photo. So I like this setup and this is exactly why I went with this system. So I could have something that was fairly small, kind of easy to carry around, but also gave me some flexibility, a uh, waist level finder and the ability to, to switch backs. And someone asked me recently, uh, what strap do I use with this? Because um, it seems kind of difficult to get a strap that will will fit onto, onto these kind of uh, lug nuts or whatever they are. But uh, you can buy these, these attachments. Um, they should come with a camera, sometimes they don't, but you can pick them up on eBay. I think this is some kind of a Hasselblad attachment maybe. Um, what I like to do is I use these uh, peak attachments and just kind of hook it in there, which means I can uh, just change straps pretty easily. So yeah, that's the Mamiya 645. Absolutely beautiful camera, tiny, modular, cheap, very cheap. Uh, last time I checked, um, uh, when I bought this, the body was 450 pounds. Uh, came with the lens, came with the waist level finder. Uh, these waist level finders are a bit difficult to find now on eBay, but overall it's a, it's a pretty cheap system compared to uh, say a Raleigh Flex or some of the alternatives. So that's the Mamiya 645, uh, one of my favorite cameras, and it definitely helped shape uh, that project and probably more to come. Um, I love shooting medium format. I hate bigger medium format cameras like the Mamiya 67. Um, I don't really like the range finder so much like the Mamiya 7 uh, because you can't really get close to people and it doesn't feel very satisfying to use, I think, even though the image quality from it is just incredible. But I think what you can get from this is almost as good uh, if you're not printing very big. And uh, one thing I'd love to do is get the 80mm f1.9 lens to see what that looks like. So maybe that's something I'll do in the future and maybe do a review of it, show some samples. Yeah, so that's Mamiya 645 and that's my zine. That's kind of the end of the episode. Thanks for watching.